Bonjour, mon petit Jeffle. Amber here. That was so loud. <laughs> Bonjour, mon petit Jeffle. Amber here. Happy New Year. It is now 2009. It is January 3rd. 3rd? 3rd. 3rd. 2019. I said 2009 and no one said anything. <laughs> oh god. Okay. So this is my first video filmed of the year. I know I uploaded my December Read With Me vlog uh, yesterday, maybe. But this is the first video I'm filming for 2019 and it is my December wrap up. In December I had, I challenged myself to read 10 books in order to hit my reading goal of 50 books in 2018 and by some miraculous event I did it. So let's chat through these books really quick. The first two books I read in December are both poetry collections by the same author. They are Milk and Honey and The Sun and Her Flowers by Ruby Core. Briefly, they are both poetry collections about, as I mentioned in my reading vlog, they touch on love, loss, healing, femininity, sex. This one talks more about immigration and the refugee experience as well as as well as everything else I just mentioned. I feel like I'm the last person on earth to read both of these books. I read each one in a sitting. While I get the hype of these particular poetry collections as a whole, I'm really into it as a whole. Always. Always something. I don't know if I love this particular style of poetry. This is the first, I guess, what is it, like Tumblr style poetry collection that I have read and to me it feels more like um just like reading a journal and just thoughts like like I mentioned before some are very very poignant thoughts but some is just like okay I get it let's go it just feels I don't know just doesn't resonate with me some really really do but um I think I gave both of them like three out of five stars and if she put out another poetry collection I'd probably read it because like I said some I, I've i marked a f uh, quite a few because there are poems in here that like are pretty pretty poignant and resonate with me but uh, I long to be a lily pad. So I also read in December The Crying Rocks by Janet Taylor Leesla. This was a quick one. I got this a while ago in a book outlet haul. This book is about a girl who, a young girl, she's 13, so I guess maybe this can be considered a middle grade book. She discovers that she is half Native American and I guess it's a story, I guess it's like her self-discovery and like it's a story of identity I suppose. I didn't love this book. When I bought it I thought uh, the whole premise of having a story about a Native American main character sounded really promising to me. I wanted a lot more from it. I wanted what I wanted and I also once again I mentioned this in the reading vlog. What I wanted was for her to find out that she is part Native American and then learn about her people, her family, and I wanted her to learn about her particular tribe um, not from books written by non-natives, you know? And I said this, I think I'm quoting myself word for word, that it felt like they were just trying to find something different or quirky about the main character that they could just write. It just felt like a random fact thrown in a story it wasn't like flushed out well to me it just in all of the the content of the Narragansett and just Native American culture in general just seemed very cliche and stereotyped and I wasn't really here for it the main character I forgot her name already Joelle is really annoying like I guess this should have been a warning here. Ho jo Hoel. <laughs> Joelle's height and dark skin set her apart. As if that's like the only criteria to be Native American 
is to be tall with dark skin. I am tall with brown skin. Yes, there is Native American in my family, but that's not my point. You get my point. I could have done without this book, but it helped me re reach my goal. Next book I read in December was Her Body and Other Parties by story It's a collection of short stories by Carmen Maria Mikado. I bought this book because there is a short story in here based off of Law and Order SVU, which is one of my favorite shows. I bought this um, in my Harry Styles book haul. Buy it on iTunes. The album, not my video. So this is basically a feminist, um, I don't know why I quoted, <laughs> collection of short stories that highlights basically eight startling stories that map the realities of women's lives and the violence visited upon their bodies. Earthly, earthy and otherworldly, antic and sexy, queer and caustic, comic and deadly serious. Her body and other parties enlarges the possibilities of contemporary fiction. I liked this a lot I think. I think. I say I think because I think I liked it. It's very... the stories are very strange. Abstract is a word I saw used in a review of the book and I definitely agree. Some are hard to follow. Some I definitely know I'm gonna have to reread to un fully grasp. I marked a few that I really liked. I liked the first one a lot which was sort of like um... I felt like a take on the, I don't remember the name of the story, but the one where the woman has the, the ribbon around her neck. The Law and Order one was a lot. That was a lot. And I felt, I liked it, but I feel like it went on for longer than it needed to. This one, I don't know what rating I'd give it because I have a lot of thoughts on it. It's very abstract. so. If you don't want to have to think too hard about what you're reading to like interpret it and understand it, maybe not this one. One thing that like was weird to me is like the way sex is used throughout the book. It just, it's just, I don't know quite how to describe it, but it's just like, like just there for, and there's, I guess you don't always have to have a reason to have sex, but. <laughs> There's no like, I don't know, I don't, forget I say anything, it's just weird and sometimes I, it doesn't fit what I'm reading for some reason or I, forget I said anything, forget I said anything, I can't, moving on, moving on. The next two books that I read are the first two books in a series that I've been trying to read forever, I finally got around to it. Three Dark Crowns and One Dark Throne by Kendar Blake. Now these books stress me out a bit. Okay, so these books are, I'm going to tell you the synopsis of this one because I don't want to spoil anything. The story is about three triplet queens that uh, every generation there there is a set of triplets, triplet queens born on Finburn Island. And when basically when they turn is it 16 i believe is it 16 they're th then they have to bait their quest is to kill off their other two sisters to claim the throne each sister is born with a gift that we have a poisoner queen an elemental queen and um a naturalist queen catherine mirabella and arsenal in this book particularly it took me a while to get into it. I was about maybe like a little over halfway through before I really started getting into it. It was a very slow build up. For a little bit it was kind of confusing because we have the three queens so the story is told through three points of view. Three, their whole three worlds basically coinciding and it's sometimes hard to keep track of who belongs where, what belongs where, what's happening where. But by the time I, I got a grasp on it, I was able to start getting attached to the characters and getting invested in particular storylines. There are... and then there's some... there's drama involved that I could have personally done without. For me, it it just... it irritated me more than anything. Maybe I guess because it involves my favorite of the, the stories. And it just kind of throws a wrench in, in said story. 
I mean, I know, like I said in the vlog, I know that you need drama or else I'd be complaining about being bored, but like, I'm over it. And then this one picks up. This one for me was, the level was the darkness that I was expecting in this one. It's still not as dark as I would really want from the synopsis and the premise of the book. But I have hope that going into the third one it gets even darker because things are happening and the, the synopsis of the third book, it definitely sounds like it's going to take it up even higher. I tap this one a lot. We have like a sort of redemption arc happening that I personally needed. The way this one ended really really upset me though. <laughs> like I'm, I didn't go through all of this all of both of these books for it to end that way and I'm gonna sue and we better have a a uh, acceptable resolution by the time I set set my foot back into the world of three dark crowns I don't know when I'm going to get the book because I'm not allowed to buy books until at least February. <laughs> so I'm, but I, that's definitely going to be one of the first books that I order when I'm allowed to buy books again. And the novella, what is that called? The Queens of Finburn or something like that. So yeah, I once I got into the books, I really really enjoyed them, and I'm looking forward to where it goes from there. I feel like I'm talking in circles, and I'm very sorry. I'm just trying to sum this all up without making this video too long. So next, the next book is possibly my favorite that I read all month, and that is Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nyan. There are a lot of tabs. This is the story of Lei, who she lives in Ikara, I believe it's called, and in this country, this world, eight girls are chosen and taken from their villages to the castle every year to become paper girls or concubines to the demon king. Lay is the mysterious ninth girl chosen as a gift to the king because she has these seemingly demon-like eyes even though she is a human. Story of not just her struggle at, at acclimating to the life of a paper girl but she sort of kind of gets caught up in this plan to overthrow, to overthrow the king there is a forbidden romance involved where this isn't really a spoiler I'm sorry she falls in love with another one of the paper girls cute and there is a trigger warning it's in the beginning of the book for violence and sexual assault so go be forewarned about that I really really enjoyed this book I thought it was written beautifully. The world is so vivid. I love the characters. I really really love the fact that I wrote this in my blog post because I, I am a book blog now. So I did have a full review of the book um, where my thoughts are a lot more coherent than they are right now. One thing that I really loved about the book is the fact that the the king, there is nothing redeeming about the king. A lot of times the villain in a story um, even though like I say he's the villain but he doesn't feel like the only okay I don't know where that stopped so let me try that let me start again one thing that I really love is the fact that the demon king there's nothing sort of redeeming about him a lot of times in novels specifically YA novels like there's a villain but um he's like a tragic backstory there's like a reason why he's like this awful person and you kind of like sort of feel bad for him and you, he's like the person that you you hate to love love to hate but like there's nothing about the demon king that make you like soften toward him and I really appreciate that because that wouldn't fit at all in this story and so I respect the author for knowing that and not trying to like steer it in any weird direction but I definitely I gave this a five out of five stars I really enjoyed this I really loved reading it and the way it ended I need the sequel now so oh, we have a reread we had a reread this month and it's one of my favorite books of all time and the fact that I got through this in such a short amount of time is a miracle. I reread The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. Once again I'll state it again, one of my favorite books of all time. I breezed through this book. I was really worried because we were in crunch mode at this point towards the end of December. I'm like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it. 
but I read 500 and some, like 550 pages in like three days, which is very good for me. This book is the story of Liesl Miminger, who is a young girl living in Nazi Germany. She loves books, specifically stealing them <laughs> and learning and words, and it's the story of her growing up during the war and her family takes in Max who is a young Jewish man and they hide him in the basement and it's their her relationship with him and I guess it's also it's like a story of humanity in a really dark time in history. The narrator is death <laughs> uh, which is really interesting and really cool and I, I've always been fascinated by that um, concept. And I just really love the story. I love the way it's written. I love I love the humanity aspect in the story. I love my children, Rudy, Max, and Liesl. They all deserve better, specifically Rudy, but I'm not going to get into that because we'll be here all day. He, if they had just let him go, if, never mind, never mind, not going to spoil anything. And I, I think I enjoyed it as much as I did the second time because it's been like four years since I read it the first time. So I think I'm going to give it another four or five years before I reread it because I always wanted to be fresh when I read it. Um, it's just one of those stories that you just kind of get really engrossed in and it kind of makes me feel really cozy. And that's why I, I read it in December. I thought like around Christmas was an appropriate time to read it. And it's a really fast read. I'm talking really fast. I'm really sorry. It's a really quick read despite how chunky this dude is. I'm nervous though because I love this book so much obviously I want to read Marcus's new book I can't remember Bridge of Clay but I've heard a lot of mixed reviews about it so and I'm really nervous because like I love this book so much and I love his writing so I'm like if it doesn't translate into another book what am I gonna do uh -huh. any whom the last book that I read in December was oh obviously Book Thief is five out of five uh, stars obviously. The last book that I read in December is another book that I got in a book outlet haul and have just not gotten around to it and it's The Crown Game by Evelyn Skye. I chose this book to read in December. I don't know why I thought I just the cover the vibe of the book just like oh this is gonna be a cozy winter read. I don't know why St. Petersburg Russia always just makes me think of winter but so basically this book takes place in a fantasy alternate imperial 19th century Russia. It's told through dual, two, dual points of view, Vika and Nikolai. They are both enchanters in Russia. Russia, I think I stated that it took place in Russia already. Um, and they've been training all their lives basically to be the imperial enchanter for the Tsar. Vika all her life has thought she was the only enchanter whereas Nikolai knew about her and knew that eventually it would come down to the crowns game which is the basically the fight to the death to become the imperial enchanter and this is just the story of them doing that. This is another one that I was expecting a lot more from. I wanted so much more from this book. I wanted high stakes life life uh, or death um, competition. I didn't get that at all. I got more just like pretty aesthetics, mat like using your magic to create pretty aesthetics and like cool but this isn't the book for that. I want, I, if you're telling me it's a crowns game, it's life or death, it, the quote is the crowns game is not one to lose, like come on, give me bloodshed, you know? And I guess that's hard to a hard story to tell when there's also like okay let me discuss this for a second one of the other things that I really didn't like about this book I thought the romance I won't say it was unnecessary even though the love triangle thing was annoying that's not a spoiler it's on the flap of the book <laughs> I okay so there's a love triangle between Nikolai, Vika, and Pasha, who is the crown prince and Nikolai's best friend. None of the relationships in this book felt really like believable or solid to me. First of all, you had two conversations with this girl. Why? How are you in love with her? It's just to be confused. I get like 
they're teenage boys, but just make it believable. To me personally, I think I mentioned this in the vlog, it would have made a lot more sense and felt more real if the whole romance aspect was Pasha and Nikolai realizing they were in love with each other because theirs is the only like relationship that I'm even vaguely invested in. I don't have any sort of attachment to this, the characters. I think if I had to pretend that I cared about any of them it'd probably be Nikolai. I guess I guess I care about him a little bit because the way the book ended is the only reason why I would consider reading the next book because I just need to under I need to see what his outcome is. What? Nothing the the main the like the the part that would make me go into the next book all of that happens in like maybe the last 60 pages of this book and I'm like okay this book is like 400 pages long why don't I why does the action happen all of the important action happen in the last like 60 pages and then it just there's a cliffhanger so what what I'm what stresses me out a little bit is the fact that uh, Evelyn Sky has a new book coming out. I think it's this month actually and it's one of it's on my list of anti most anticipated reads of the year specific. Did I mention that I have a book blog? So I have the post my mo highly anticipated books and like I broke it down like seasons but say like one more time Amber. So I put that on the list before I read this book but like I'm God, there I said like again. I, I don't know how I feel about her writing and now I'm nervous but I'm gonna read it anyway and I'll let you know. So that was The Crown's Game by Evelyn Skye. I, I don't know if anything I said just made sense but I wanted so much more from this book is the moral of the story. I was expecting so much more and I'm probably gonna read the sequel because you just gave me a little bit enough twist to pique my interest and hopefully it gets like spicier you know. So those are the 10 books Oh no, was that 10? Oh no, because I read, also listened to Becoming by Michelle Obama. I didn't mention that at all. I really like that. I really enjoy listening to her tell her story. Was that this month? That was this month, wasn't it? December. Yep, <laughs> last month. I really enjoy listening to her tell her story. Um, growing up, meeting my dad, Barack Obama, up until being the first lady. I could listen to her read off a shopping list and I'm... Just, after the past three years? This is the third year, right? It's nice to remember that at one point in time we had people like living in the White House that could construct a full sentence. That's neither here nor there. Anyway, those are the books that I read in December. <laughs> So now I'm going to share with you my plans for January. I actually filmed this clip like a week ago. So here it is. Hello, so it is 2.06 in the morning and I'm doing this clip now even though it's going to go in at the end of this video um, because this vlog, I'm honestly going to put in the vlog and the wrap up because I can't be bothered to film it twice. Because uh, I look like a decent person despite the very janky lipstick I just had pie. It's now time to determine my January TBR and I don't know if I mentioned before how I'm doing my TBRs for a little bit. I'm kind of on a semi book buying ban because I have like a ton of books that one I've been saving, two I have a ton of books that um from various halls that I haven't even like started getting to. So what I did, hello, <laughs> that's unflattering. What I did was put all of the book titles in my Yoda mug and I'm going to draw from them every month and that's how I'm going to put my TBR together. So this first time we are implementing the TBR mug. Okay, the first book, I'm really hoping for no big books because I am going away and I'm not really trying to carry a giant book with me. First one is, ooh! Mirage by Samaya Dowd, which I'm really, really glad about because I've been wanting to read this book and I've been putting it off. I should actually be showing me doing this. Right at the bottom. It, and I can't read that because that is a 
a third book not a sequel a third book I don't even know why I put it in here is a study in Charlotte I don't remember who the author is at the time neither of these books is too big this guy the 48 which is a book I bought one of the last books I actually bought um, I got it around Halloween time so that's cool a pretty recent book and the last one that I am that we're adding to my January TBR is Within These Walls, which I think I got in my first book outlet haul. Great. All right. None of them are terribly huge. And most of them are books that I'm really excited to read. All right. So thank you for watching. Welcome to 2019. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like me, feel free to subscribe. All my places are down here so you can follow me and I'll follow you back and I'll see you very soon. Bye!